Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz and this is The Liz Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at LizBuildingLifestyleShow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy Liz Builder Survival Guide at LizBuildingLifestyleShow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your Liz Building Lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of the Liz Building Lifestyle with your host, Eero Kafetz. My next guest is a legend. Mike Littman, the number one international best-selling author of Conversations with Millionaires, says that my guest is without a doubt the most powerful promoter he ever worked with. Mark Joyner, the founder of Simpleology and the author of Integration Marketing, says that my guest is one of the smartest marketers alive. Bill Glazer, number one best-selling author of Outrageous Advertising and Dan Kennedy's partner in Glazer Kennedy in a Circle, says that you really need to call him Dr because he's, he has the PhD in affiliate marketing and JV marketing and email marketing. Russell Bronson, the co-founder of ClickFunnels and the CEO of Dotcom Secrets, um, says that there's only one marketer that I have personally hired to consult me and I paid him $1,000 for one hour of his time that made me $250,000 that year. My guest has been building email lists since the year 99 and has ever since made over $100 million with email. He sent over 1 billion emails out. And of course, when I say 1 billion emails, I mean 1 billion marketing emails. And right now, he started the project called EPC Institute, where he's teaching people how to use email marketing in their business to capitalize on ginormous profit opportunities, no matter the niche or the type of business they're in. My guest today is none other than Matt Basak, the living legend of email marketing. Matt, thank you and welcome to the List Billing Lifestyle. Dude, thank you very much, man. It's a really an honor to be here. And I looked at all your guests, and I'm like, man, this is awesome. I really, I really am uh, grateful to be here. Yeah, we work hard to get the best guests, and that's why I'm really happy uh, to get you on the show as well. And make no bones about it. Once the episode goes live, you're going right there on the right hand side of our website on the widget that says to feature guests, right along the you know the Kiyosakis and the Perry Marshalls and you know and the billionaires that that we host on the show. So, Matt, the reason I invited you. On the list building lifestyle is very simple. I'm an email marketer, as you know, and you're mm -hmm. an email marketer, and you've been uh, making money with email since before I knew what internet was, since before I had my first computer, actually. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so obviously, the world is is rapidly changing. The media changes. the The technology changes. Everything is is really moving really really fast, and a lot of people that kind of. Um, listen to our show and get into our world. And when we tell them that email marketing is the way to go, they tell us things like, oh, email marketing doesn't work. Facebook's taking over the world. You better use Twitter and Snapchat to make money. So what is your take on that? What, what is your take on email versus all the other ways of making money? Well, first of all, I mean, let's kind of check ourselves a little bit at the door here. I mean, the reason I say that is because Right now, email is going to be used by 3 billion people by 2020. So that's almost half the world's population. I mean, so there's a bunch of opportunity there. But we're talking about from a money perspective. Here's the thing. Most people, you know, I've been running businesses, gosh, for a long time, even before then. And, you know, the fundamentals, you know, are really important. I know technology changes, media changes. But the cool thing is every, every year, everybody tells me the same thing you just said. They tell me, hey, email marketing's dead. The next year, it's email marketing is alive. The next year, email marketing is dead. And then the next year, it's alive. But the great thing is email makes money. You know, And for every dollar that I spend on email marketing, I always can expect about an re average return about $38. You know, Because the great thing is it, it drives customer acquisition. It drives retention. And in fact, you know, everybody thinks Facebook, you know, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. But people go to Facebook to like stuff. People get emails to buy stuff, and, and you know from there, and people are more likely to interact, and then they already interact with you to sign up for your list on from email. I mean, even they're twice likely. Even Forrester Research says the same thing. People are twice as likely to sign up for your email list than they already interact with you on Facebook. So, and then you were just talking about social media and search, and you know, you know that shouldn't be ignored. But here's the thing, and folks, this is you you combine those two tactics right there, just the search and 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 social media. You combine the two tactics. And email has higher conversion rates than both of them to combine. So, you know, like whoever's filling your head with that crap, like listen to Igor. He knows what he's talking about because right now what's happening in the marketplace 
is customers are relying on emails more to learning about businesses, you know, as they shop so they can get informed to make better decisions. You know, it's, it's, it's like, it's crazy. And also, here's the thing, too. And this one is a kind of a writer downer for some people because personalized emails receive transaction rates that are six times higher than others out there. So, you know, I mean, it's it's insane. In fact, here's something that, that if you guys aren't like dead set on, you know, even doing email, listen to this. People who purchase through email spend one hundred and thirty eight percent more than those that don't receive email offers. So. You'd be stupid not to, quite honestly. I mean, your bank account will hate you <laughs> uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking at a study by MailMunch right now, and uh, it ranks all the possible traffic sources. It goes from paid search to free search to direct hits, referrals, social media, such as you know Facebook, Twitter, and so on and so forth. And Facebook and, so, and other social media outlets uh, is actually third from the bottom. Right. Email is third from the top and email does not lead on the amount of conversions. Actually, the leader for the amount of conversions is uh, organic search, but email is leading for the profit per sale. And right now it stands about uh, one and a half times more than search and get this 20 times more than social media. Oh, yeah. Totally believe it. Incredible. And yeah, and unless you use email marketing in your business, you wouldn't be able to see it for yourself. But for me as well, you know, what really, what really resonated with me when you said people who go on social media, like and comment, people who get emails, they buy. And they've done another study, not mail much, some, someone else done, uh, done the study. I downloaded the PDF about a year ago, but they've actually tested two types of audiences. They surveyed the audience and they asked, what do you do first thing in the morning? Do you check your email or do you check your Facebook? And so the people who check their Facebook uh, first thing in the morning, they believe that they patronize a business. They believe that they contribute to a business by basically liking the stuff that that business publishes on their fan page. And people who check their emails first thing in the morning, they believe that to patronize the business, you actually need to buy something from the business, which is the kind of customer I would appreciate most. Absolutely. So my next question Matt, uh, is, is this. So you sent out over a billion emails since 99. That's that's a lot. I mean, even even for me, that that's a bit over the top. A billion emails. I never counted how many emails I sent out, but that's impressive. So you've probably seen uh, the game change a little bit. And of course, you know, we, we can't be ignoring the fact that the emailing game changed in the way the emails are delivered, how the, uh, the ESPs are, are changing the rules all the time. So can you walk us through some of the some of the better practices that we need to be aware of today in order to achieve better delivery rates and kind of increase our chances of hitting the inbox? Well, I mean, that's a great question, but I do want to say this. It's interesting because when, you know, I first started, you know, I started emailing, you know, sending out, you know, broadcasts, a lot of emails back in, uh, you know, 99, you know, things were a lot different. There's been a lot of changes. And um, however, here, the reason I want to bring that up is, it's done a lot of changes, but I'm starting to notice it's a little more easier than it used to be, um, you know, about five years ago. So I'm seeing another trend come back uh, more towards, you know, the thing. But here's here's one thing. I, I do a lot of split testing. I've done over, I think, 8,000 email split test rounds. And here's some things that I've discovered. One, you know, it, and this is I, – I wouldn't call it best practices. <laughs> it's my best practices based upon my thing because it will probably – some of the things I might say might go against what – you know, your, whoever you're mailing from will say, but you know, one thing that, that I love doing, one thing you could do to, in order to increase your, you know, open rates, getting it all through there, um, is the fact that you got to pay attention to, you know, where you're, I mean, this will actually increase your profits. So if, if you've guys got a list and stuff like that, you might want to take in consideration of where you're sending it from. Like what's the from name, what's the email address that you're sending from just that alone can really change a lot of things for you because there's some customers that you have that are like, man, I really want this. And they might put you in a box and they'll never get back to it. So my, my point being is, so let's say, you know, like my name is Matt Basak. And so I might have, you know, Matt Basak at Matt at, you know, powerfulphoner.com, whatever. That's an old domain. But, you know, so I might have that, but I also might be able to change it up like Matt staff, like my wife. You know, if I'm mailing out and, it's, you know, I sign it off my wife and I, or you can have it from the corporation. So I can actually send one out from the corporation. So, you know, whenever you're writing what I found is if you can just change up that alone, that's going to get more open. That'll get more opens. That'll get more people to pay attention to your emails and that'll make things happen. So if you're running a bricks and mortars company, you might want to, you can send one from your company and you can actually send one from like the president of the company. If that makes sense, like that alone is, is really like a, 
you know, a little trick that really works really well for people. Now, you know, so, I mean, you know, I'm thinking of like tons of different things, like nothing's really changed. Now, here's one thing that I think is really important. Um, you know, we've, I've done a lot of different tests uh, for me. I will tell you, for me, I like to send, I mean, I'm not talking long, say, like long, 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 long pages where they got to scroll a thousand times. <laughs> you know, I like to keep them a little shorter. If you have to scroll, like, I don't want you to have to scroll more than twice a lot of times. Um, so it would be like, you know, I don't want to have it more than twice because for me, the, the the whole purpose is to train them to get them to go to a place. So if I'm training them, I want them to go to my blog. If they want to go learn something, let's just say, or I want them to go to a, a page to go buy. So whenever I'm doing something like that, it's really important. I think for a lot of people who do not realize this is just the PS alone. Like it sounds really simple and so stupid, but just the PS alone, especially if, and here's the one thing, if you guys want to get rid of your unsubscribes, a big mistake I see a lot of people doing today, there's a new movement where a lot of people are starting to put their pictures by their signature file. If you put your picture down by your signature file, what you're going to discover is that people's eyes are going to be drawn straight to that picture. And the next thing, the next opportunity for them to have to do anything is going to be click your unsubscribe link. So <laughs> if you do, you know, if you do put a picture down there or your company or logo, because people's eyes are drawn to that. If you do that, add a PS and in that PS, add a, you know, a button for people to click so that it's not the next thing for them to do is, you know, unsubs- you know, to, to unsubscribe from your list because you'll notice you'll, you'll get more, you'll get more people clicking, you'll get more people going to your page, um, you know, that are reading it. So that's one thing uh, that I just want to kind of throw out there because I've seen a lot of people doing it right now. And it kind of scares me because people don't understand that, you know, people are drawn to pictures. And so more people are putting pictures in their emails, the more um, it's causing, you know, the change in readership. Because if you put your picture on the, if let's say you had a header and you put your picture on the right hand side, then the eyes are going to flow to the right hand side. It's going to change the eye movement from right to left instead of left to right. So you know, you, in an email, and so those are little things or big things or little things that can really you know help you in considering with with your emails itself. But I will tell you. So let me give you guys something that just came up to me. That's like freaking. Hopefully this is a you know a, this is a writer down. Okay. So here's something I know from my test. Okay, so I call it the mirroring. And if your subject line, so if my subject line, whatever the subject line is, and let's say I have a straight out link. What I'm talking about is www.mydomain.com. And then whenever I'm sending to somebody, I might put, you know, www.mydomain.com forward slash, you know, click here, let's just say. Now, if the subject line is, I'm just going to, I'm using these just to make it easier on me is buy this, right? <laughs> so, so I'm just going to use it. So buy this is a subject line. If I mirror whatever it says in the subject line in the link, so if the link, the ultimate link would be buy this.com. If the subject line matches there, because the thing that got them open will be the thing that gets them a click. So the thing that opens. So now if I don't do it and I do what's called a re- redirect, so it'll be like www.mydomain.com forward slash buy this, I'm going to see an increase in amount of clicks. But if I want to create, get rid of increase amount of opens, if I take the subject line, and, and here's the thing that's happening today is, you know, and you think about this, when you open up your email and you're going to your email account, you'll typically, you're going to see the from name, you're going to some, right, say the email, you're going to see the subject line. And a lot of times you'll see like the first few lines or the first line in the email. If the first line in the email matches and mirrors what it has in the subject line, you're going to, you, I mean, the subject line, it's, it's somewhere and it doesn't have to be the same, you know. Let's say I said, I think I used buy this. So if it's like, I just want to let you you know, know that you should buy this. Like, let's say that was the first line, right? And it matched the subject line. Then you're going to find you're going to get a heck of a lot more opens and more clicks. And then if you have, or more clicks with the link, but more click, more opens with paying attention to that first line. Because that first line matching the thing that got them to open it up, it, it's a no brainer. It's going to pull them in and it's going to get them to go down. They're going to see it in there. And I mean, the same exact thing. So thinking about that, it's mirroring. I call it mirroring. You just mirror whatever the subject – if you mirror the subject line throughout in the copy, with especially with the link, especially with that opening sentence, boom, you're going to find that you're going to get more opens and more clicks. Wow. Sounds like you split test everything. I mean I, I do don't know anyone test. who split tests – I split like... test every freaking element theory. I, sp- I do five radical freedom variations every single day. I'm actually fiending right now because we had a holiday yesterday. So um, I didn't do my split test. So I'm like kind of shaking because I, I do want everything. <laughs> um, and you know, we had a holiday. You're a split so test off. junkie. But I do. I, I'm a split test fanatic. And the reason is because one slight variation is going to change everything for me. And I always split test radicals. So and, and the reason I split test radicals, I split test radically different variations 
for a certain reason, and the reason is because radicals create radically different results. If I created slightly different variations, using the example, let's just say I'm just split testing headlines. I mean, subject lines. There's the headlines, same, the subject lines, same thing. But let's just say, um, you know, I'm split testing the subject line by this, and I have another one, and I'm just making some radically different, you know, things to you. But like, let's just say I just split tested, hey. And then buy this, and I split tested, dude, which are common things that somebody I know that uses. And then, and then I split test. This is really good, you know. So I got those four radically different subject lines, and I'll give myself the fifth one. You know, I'd be like, you know, X Y Z is live. So I've got five radically different subject lines. I'm going to get radically different results, and each subject line that I send out is going to also dictate the amount of clicks. It's it's amazing. Uh, you know, I might get more opens with the hey. I'll get more opens based on that um, example I just gave you. I'll get tons more opens with the with the hey and dude, but I'm not going to get intent. And what I want to, you know, it's whatever the intention I want to create from the subject line. And, and the intent would be on the one is like buy this, which is the one I use. If the intention when they open it up, they know hey, it's something for them to buy. I'm going to have more likelihood of. You know, I have more people reading the email at hey and dude because it's like, hey, my intention is to get their attention. But if my intention is to get them to buy this, then buy this is probably going to be the thing that's going to create more clicks. You know, I, you know, I haven't done this exact. I mean, I've done a similar test to this, so I don't know, um, you know, exactly. But I split test radicals because, you know, I never know. Just because something, and to me, I do not care when it comes to my split test. I'm paying attention to what is the thing that's going to create the action, and the action I want is to get them to click go to a page, because the number one most important credit, you know, metric when it comes to email marketing to me is EPC earnings per click. So, um, especially if I'm sending out something for people to buy, you know, it could be, you know, um, I'm, you know, if I'm sending out to to have people read, then I want to go with the hey and the dude to get more people to read. But if I'm getting people to buy, I want that intent to buy. I want more people to click to be able to go buy. So, um, I'm always paying attention to. You know, I'm testing elements from in a way I test elements, all elements, whether it's with opt-in pages, whether it's with sales pages or whether it's emails. I always start and you notice me do it at the beginning of our conversation. I started with the first thing that they're going to see, which is the email address. And then I started with the next thing. If you actually really think about what I just did is then I not. And then the next thing I brought up was the subject line. And then the next thing I brought up was the actual email itself. And then the next thing I brought up was actually the well, actually I, I brought up a link and then I brought up email. But. But I usually go in the same direction that the eyeballs move, or the tra or the the person, the recipients going to pay attention, and that's what I care about the most because that's what's going to happen. Like, what good is it to focus on, you know, <laughs> anything, you know, the email? If I can't, you know, I mean, what's great to focus on? But my point is, I always want to focus, and I always focus on the direction that the person on the end, how, what they're going to go through. Wow. Do you document your split tests? Oh gosh, I have. You should see my books. <laughs> yes, I document everything. Um, I well, I will tell you. When I first started, I didn't, and that was the dumbest thing. But then I got really smart, and I went and I hired somebody to actually pull all the data because everyone in the office didn't want to do it. It was yeah, like more of the marketing side of things. So I just, you know, I found somebody. I have a virtual assistant that literally goes into my data, pulls all my data, gives me Excel spreadsheets every single day. And in fact. When I get those Excel spreadsheets, it, it, my Excel spreadsheets are based upon a what I call, um, I think it's the most important equation uh, when it comes to email marketing. And the equation is, and just to share with you guys, the equation is S plus C plus E equals money. And what that stands for, the S stands for subscribers, the C stands for clicks, and the E stands for EPC because I am tracking that, and that's that's how I'm managing things. So when she pulls, so my Excel spreadsheet comes in. Um, I'm going to get she, one uh, column is going to be, you know, how many subscribers I had at that moment, which is the S. The next column is going to be how many clicks that they got. The next column is going to be what's my EPC. The next column is going to, or the next column is going to be um, actually the the actual subject line and the email used in order to create that that result. Um, and I have all of those documented for since I think uh, probably 2009. Um, so when I finally woke up to realize, what am I doing? I need this data. So what that allows me to do is make better decisions on what to use and what to test against. Because then, and, and here's what I, because now it's to the point where I'll test my best against my best and get to my even better, right? Um, and then, or if I'm going to reuse something that worked really well, I might recraft it a little bit. And if I do recraft it a little bit, I'm just going to, you know, slightly recraft it. But what I'm going to do at that moment, because I found my winner and I already have my data, then I'll go in and at that moment, if I'm split testing like the subject line, and let's say buy this was it, then I'm going to split test. And for me, I even get down to 
okay, so do I put capital? So is it buy, capital buy, capital on the buy, and capital on the this? Is it lowercase? I mean, just those little things. Do I add an exclamation point? Do I, add, you know, like what little element is going to create more revenue for me? What little element is going to create more clicks for me? So, you know, and then sometimes it is so radically different. Sometimes the slight variations create slight variations in results, but sometimes it really does change anything. You know, if I capitalize the whole thing, even, you know, all of it, is that going to work? You know, so I'm you know, I'm taking that one winner and then I'm making slight variations, but it's interesting because I'll start seeing, you know, they'll start, I'll start seeing trends in the emails and then I'll come back and I'll use that data to make my decisions on my next thing that I'm going out with. So, um, so I, I mean, like I said, I do split test a lot, probably more than anybody that I know in the marketplace. Um, just because, you know, I just seen that just one slight change can change everything and it'll increase. I mean, if I can double my clicks, I double the amount of money I make. If I can double, you know, if, I mean, to doing things like that. Now, here's the interesting thing. And I know it's probably going in some people's head because there's a huge myth out there and, um, is the fact that, um, all comes down to one thing is, is the actual open, you know, like, why is that like the formula I gave you guys was S plus C plus E plus equals money. Why is there no S plus O? You know, why is there no such thing? Why, why Matt, why are you focused on open rates? Here's one thing that has changed. So, so at the beginning you asked like, Hey, what are the changes? Well, here's a big change that I think is very important, especially when it comes to metrics, um, you know, email marketing metrics. And that one thing is open rates. Things have changed. Now that we literally have gone in and we started looking at, you know, open rates. I mean, well, we're looking at, um, we're looking at these stats and stuff like that. It's open rates, and this is something that people don't put in the back of the head. My tests prove that opens cannot always be verified, but, but clicks can be verified. And that's why in mine, I'm always focusing on that. You know, only open rates are not part of my equation for many reasons. But here's the thing. And if you guys think about this, and, and here's the change. So in order to track an open rate, the, the person receiving the email must, you know, allow HTML to be displayed. And I don't know if you guys have ever been there. We open up your email, and there it says, click here to display you know, this message, you know, or to view the, you know, the message because there's, there's things in there. Well, many email clients do not automatically load images, you know, in the message. And so, um, you know, so what happens is you have to choose to display them and download them and display them. And what that creates is that creates, it doesn't show open rates properly. We can track clicks, like we can track the clicks, but we can't track open rates properly. And what now with even mobile phones, What's caught, what's happening is because your carriers, the mobile phone carriers want to, you know, save the data usage, what they're doing is, and also protect you from, you know, harmful HTML, but what they're doing is they're, they're, they're not pulling that data in so much. So we're not getting true tracking, um, and, you know, tracking on those things. So I don't really pay attention. The only time I do. So, you know, and, and people are like, well, if, if they don't open it, they can't, you know, this argument I always get, well, if they don't open it, well, then they can't click. Well, he, you know you're not seeing the open because sometimes because it's not being tracked properly. And that's a big change in the market. Um, especially now with mobile phones, like I said, cause they're not, you know, they're trying to save you. They're hiding the, the, the HTML a little bit sometimes to save you on the data. So they're, you're not displaying as much. Um, that would be a big change. But the other side of it, the big thing to it too is opens. Like I was talking about with intent, like buy this and Hey, you know, opens do not always opens will actually do not equal, um, you know, clicks at all. It's, it's, it's funny. Some of my lowest open rate subject lines, the, the lowest open rate subject lines that I have sometimes are my biggest winners, you know, because I'm looking at my click to, you know, my, I'm looking at you know, clicks. I'm paying attention to which one's bringing the most money for me. And it's not, it, I will tell you nine times. I hate giving people blanket statements like, like this. I'm about to say, but nine times out of 10, my lowest, lower open rates are going to beat my highest open rates for clicks and revenue than, you know, anything else. And all my split tests tell it, and I learned, you know, just don't don't argue um, with data. So, um, you know, yeah, so numbers don't there, lie. Numbers don't lie. Yeah, Hit numbers don't lie at all. <clears throat> a lot of times, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, test this out. It, it's definitely gonna work. It's I'm this is this is a true win. I don't even need the test to tell me that. I know it's gonna win. And then it just bombs. And then other times, I'm like sitting there, I'm doubting, I'm biting my nails. And all of a sudden, they got a great winner. So yeah, only go by the numbers because if you go by the hunch, most likely you'll just end up, uh, you know, uh, wasting, wasting time and money, man, you shared so much. I couldn't even be taking notes fast enough. Uh -huh. um, and, I, and I got so many questions to keep asking you, but we're actually nearly out of time. So let me just ask you one final, no, don't apologize, please. Uh, let me just ask you one more, one more question. So you mentioned that 
you go from from email to from name to subject line to first line to email body to link and obviously you know you're very aggressive when it comes to split testing and with emails that's i mean that's awesome uh, no one i know including myself is that aggressive i thought i was like strategic compared to you i'm i'm just i don't know what i'm doing so my <laughs> question to you is though like the split tests you're conducting on your emails um, do you ever transfer the results of those tests onto sales pages via sales or any oh my gosh. media? Dang it, you nailed it. So yes, oh my gosh, I will tell you. So it's funny because one of the biggest things that I've been test why well, I tested last month, couple last couple months, I figured you know what, you know one of the things I want to test is actually my format. Like I wanted to create, like I would call my. I told myself, I want to create the ultimate format for email marketing, right? You know, like, because I just wanted my, to be like, adding my picture. And that's how I found out a lot of stuff. I said. So here, here, yes, I always, so my best subject lines, and that's why I use that report. I pull it up. I go, which subject line made me the most money? Boom. You know, and I will use that as my headline. I will use that as my sub headlines. I will use that as my Facebook post. I will use that. Like I use it all over the place. I mean, I get my money's worth it. I put it on LinkedIn, you know, like whenever I'm posting about it. Um, but here's the other thing. This is where I was getting at why I got really, really excited because, you know, it dawned on me, I do that. But then what didn't dawn on me until actually somebody in one of my, my groups said to me, you know, Matt, have you ever tested this format that you've been testing and put it on a web page? Oh my gosh. I, so I was like, you know what? You're right. Like I'm sending them to a page. It doesn't look like the, the page. Like I've done all these split tests. I mean, I'm talking about button colors down to the, the exact, fonts. I mean, I, I mean, and I was like, hold on. Let me, so I put an exact replica of my email. Like I literally same font style, same button colors, you know, which is not what people would even think they are. Um, and you know, but all these different things on here and I'm like, and it, you know, and I put it, it was looked like my email and it went up my, it was for a webinar. I was doing it originally started off on a webinar. My webinar, it went to 89% conversion rate. I was like, what the crap? Like why? Did I not think about like just that element? But usually I use certain elements, a lot of the emails for my email copy. I use the, you know, but I never thought about formatting until I did that. And now I'm like, yeah, there it is. It's amazing because it's so much faster to test an email. And so I can take that and bring it over to, you know, the, the, the online and it, and it works like freaking mad. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And, you know, we, we've been split testing some things as well. And things like moving your button from being uh, blue to being orange or Amazon style sort of uh, yellowish, that increases conversions. Uh, like the craziest things you wouldn't even consider. So uh, when you say you split test radicals, I think that's the biggest thing about split testing that you know, we, we can come away with from this, from this episode is that, of course, A, you got a split test in and of itself. This is a big thing, but also split test radicals and split test things that you don't you wouldn't even expect to make a difference. This is yeah, let me, let me, yeah. I know we don't have much time, but let me say this, because since you're talking about split testing, I feel really obligated to say this to you guys. So when I say split test, like, first of all, split, like when I split test, it goes through my mind. I want to transfer this to your heads it, it is this I want to create. Here's what I think will work. And here's what, and I'll even go like, let me be crazy. This is what I don't think will work. And I will literally test that way when I talk about radicals. When I talk about radicals, I'm also talking about pretty as hell and ugly as hell. Like things I won't want to show anybody. But anyway, I just want to tell you, like when I talk about radicals, I'm talking about radically different things. Like a cup and a freaking bat. Like that's radical. Yeah, absolutely. And this is uh, this is something I learned in my copywriting days when, um, you know, my, my, my copywriting mentor would, would force me to write copy. And then he'd be like, okay, now you know, write 10 new headlines. And I would write 10 new headlines, but then he would come back to me. He's like, dude, you're just changing one word in the headline. You're not really split testing anything here. I'm like, yeah, but this headline kind of works and I don't want to go away. No, he's like, test completely different angles, completely different directions. That's the only way to know what radically works well. Because if you change the word easy to a word simple, that that's not going to do much for you. But if you change the whole angle of the promotion, that may result in... Uh, in a big breakthrough and that's how i started applying it to my emails and my and my frames as well when i do any frames for for affiliate products or anything like that i can have the exact same product but i'll build three different angles three different frames for it and one frame may get more click-throughs but the other one will be the one that make me more money so that's the one that goes into my follow-up sequence into an evergreen sequence right that just you know i know i'm gonna make the most money with that frame that's awesome 
All right, so Matt, um, obviously your wealth of knowledge when it comes to emails, when it comes to split tests, when it comes to getting more clicks, more sales, higher EPCs. So, um, and it's obvious that we cannot share everything in the one thirty-minute interview. So, where can we go to learn more about what you do and perhaps you know steal some of your secrets? Well, if you want to steal my secrets, <laughs> then you got to go to Facebook and join my Facebook. Uh, it's called Matt Pacex List Building Club. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I do uh, share in there. Like I do I try to do you know, Facebook lives. I brought it, bring on guests, kind of like what you're doing here, just bring on guests and have, and I pick their brain and get some good stuff out of them. Uh, but I also share my stuff too. So actually my format's actually in there. And actually I think I even talked about split testing in one of the videos too. So you can find those in there. That would probably be one of the, you know, probably the best places for anybody to go kind of get inside my mind and get around, you know, uh, my stuff. All right. Yeah, actually, I'm logging in right now. It turns out I'm a member, but I never visited the group. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> I joined. You got 18,000 people here, almost 18,000 now. Um, you got a bunch of good stuff here. You got swipe files. You got how to place links in your emails, how to not to place links in your emails. All right. Cool. Well, guys, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash list building club. That's where you'll find um matt's secret list building society and you know he's sharing all these secrets for free which is insane but uh matt i also know you're working on something big right now something that okay. is gonna um really change the direction that the list building industry is going uh in right now so perhaps you want to share a little bit more about that yeah absolutely you know i created the epc it's it, it, you know, my life, and actually, I'll started when I say 1999. Just so you guys know, I'm 40. So really, it's been half my life I've been email marketing. That's crazy to think. So for over tw almost 20 years, I've been email marketing, um, and so literally, it's half my life. And and so what I did is I don't know if you guys ever heard of it or Kenny Glazer or you know Digital Marketer, but I I, I brought on one of their uh, one of the guys that built their platform for them and actually brought him in as a partner. And we created what's called the EPC Institute, where we're really focusing on, you know, creating an environment where people can learn more about, you know, email marketing. And I've literally, you know, not just, you know, e not just email marketing, but I was sick and tired of people not taking action. I was sick and tired of people not, you know, getting results. And and I wanted to make a difference, you know, really, really make a difference in the world. Like you said, we talked about the List Building Club, you know, I have over half a million customers that bought email marketing stuff for me. I've been in touch with them over the years. So I know what's going on. People are going out there and buying stuff in the market. They're not getting results. And at this point in my career, it's not okay. So what we did was I hunkered down. I partnered with him, you know, one of the top, you know, da driven platform, you know, results driven platform um, guys in the world. And we created, you know, a program and a next generation program brought in curriculum designers and just really created a place where people could come and uh, just go and get, you know, like right now, I think the marketplace is really serving everybody scrambled eggs when you really need them. And so what we did is we created an omelet it is really what it is. And it's basically put my lifetime's work together. And I brought in two, not, not one, but two curriculum design experts that actually you know, they, they really figure out how the brain works and we created a structure. We structure everything. Not, so it's not just great information, but structured in a way that your brain can absorb it and can be and can comprehend it. And then, you know, you can go and take action on it. And so we, you know, I'm just I'm just excited. Like, I don't know if you guys hear like we build in accountability. We, we've done all this stuff. So we've we've created this environment where people go to learn to get better. And just like these these ladies, there's two of them. They just suck. It's like, I feel like I've been dissected the last six months. Like I'm on the operation table, like Matt, we need to know more about this. We need to know more about this. And then they break it down and put it in a way that I, I mean, I'm just, I, I, I'll just tell you this, I, I could, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. And I, even my partner, when he wrote me, he said, Matt, how do you feel when it's, you know, after I finished the, you know, getting the first thing done and you know, how he goes, how do you feel? I said, this sounds weird. And so I said, I said, this sounds weird, but I had tears I, you know, after I completed the first lesson, the moment I finally realized it's my life's work. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, so it's something that I put pride in, and as you can guys tell, and we've cre we're creating, you know, right now designated, you know, people as an email marketing specialist from the EPC Institute. We've got more stuff coming. Um, I'm just excited because we just got the first course done, and we've got a lot more planned for the future. Wow. Sounds like you got a lot going on. I'm definitely going to be watching you in that space. I'm definitely going to be watching the EPC Institute. Uh, so guys, you want to check out EPC Institute. It's literally up right now and it's going to be growing from here on out. Uh, go to epcinstitute.com and don't forget to join Matt's uh, Facebook group on facebook.com 
forward slash groups forward slash list building club matt i gotta be honest i don't like facebook i don't go uh -huh. much on facebook it's very distracting annoying and it really yeah. makes me miserable looking at at all the uh at all the nice photos that people post about how amazing their life is and then i kind of compared it to my life and how much it sucks and you know i, <laughs> well, I don't you, like well, you need, i mean i'm gonna tell you let me fix that for you because you should go in there and look at your ads of course but uh you know, the other thing is, I, I mean, I use a plugin, so all that stuff vanishes. I don't see any of that stuff. I just only pay attention to my groups, and, you know, I, I don't pay attention to anybody else's stuff except for my own. So if somebody tags me in something, I'll pay attention to it. But other than that, I, you know, I, I don't know if you've got, you know, I'm just going to tell you, like, really the best thing to ever do is, you know, down, like, there's a thing where you can just block all that crap out, um, you know, with a plugin. So I'm just telling that for anybody. Like, it, it literally will save so much time. Uh, for you, there's a plugin. If you just go in, you can find it. And I use that all the time. That's what I use. So I don't get caught up in crap. Yeah, absolutely. That's called the Facebook feed killer. And I have it installed. Yeah. What, oh, I, do. what I don't like is still I get sucked up into the drama. There's posts, there's uh -huh. this, there's that. And, you know, sometimes I find myself procrastinating and somehow I end up on Facebook. <laughs> so, you know, Facebook, yeah. no matter how I look at it, besides maybe chatting with some joint venture partners, uh, it's just a really bad use of my time. But, but... I will be checking in with your group now. So there's another reason for me, one positive reason for me to go on Facebook besides joint ventures. So uh, guys, that's once again, that's epcinstitute.com and facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash list building club. Go ahead, get on the club. There's a bunch of free stuff there. Matt's split tests, know-how tutorials i see there's an interview with john benson who is one of the best living copywriters today considered widely considered to be one of the best uh so get on it tons of good stuff on it matt thank you so very much for uh joining the already impressive list of uh superstar guests for the list building lifestyle show i appreciate it and uh I truly enjoyed interviewing you today. You've shared a bunch of good material. I'll have to re-listen to the recording and uh, steal some of your some of your uh, split testing secrets. And mm -hmm. I really hope that we're going to host you on the show again in the near future when EPC Institute starts rolling out these courses and big projects. So thank you again. And until next time we chat, have a good one. Thank you for listening to The Liz Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one.